to the presidential elections in Uzbekistan. You're all very welcome. We're going to have some comments and remarks from up here on the podium, and then we'll have the time for your questions. I give the floor first of all to Reinhard Gopatka, who is special coordinator and leader of the short term OSC Observer Mission. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> and thank you to the people of Uzbekistan for your warm welcome to all of our many observers. I am pleased to announce our main conclusions, which come not only from us up in this podium, uh, what we present is based on findings from a team of long-term expert observers, as well as more than 350 international observers working together on election day. I extend my thanks to my colleagues here for our close uh, cooperation and to the dedicated work of all of our observers working across the country yesterday. Our main assessment is that yesterday's presidential election demonstrated that recent reforms which have gradually introduced welcome improvements have not yet resulted in a genuinely pluralistic environment. Remaining restrictions on fundamental freedoms and the right to stand continue to run counter to OSCE commitments. While multiple candidates contested the election, there was no meaningful engagement with each other or with voters. And candidates refrained from challenging or criticizing the incumbent. The general lack of distinction between the incumbent's campaign and official activities blurred the line between state and party. Despite some opening uh, of the media environment, in particular online, the space for citizens to freely and fully express their opinion remains controlled. Election preparation were handled efficiently and professionally. However, while election day was peaceful, significant procedural irregularities were observed and important safeguards were often disregarded during voting, counting, and deliberation. In a short while, you will receive our full statement. This report includes much more detail and extensive analysis to explain and support our conclusions. Those we have met with have been quite consistent in telling us that the country has seen improvements in recent years. And our findings point to a number of important reforms. But democracy is a long and sometimes difficult road. It is, however, absolutely the right road and the OEC is here to support this process. In my numerous visits to Uzbekistan, I have become very fond of this beautiful country with such a unique cultural history and the people. And I think these people deserve the opportunity to openly voice their opinions and to have distinct alternatives from which to choose their representatives. I hope that our observations and the recommendations that we also want to send them. Will help Uzbekistan move further Today we are in this direction. In conclusion, I will reiterate that this election has shown that the democratic reform of recent years must be carried forward to confirm what has already been achieved. Full respect for basic freedoms and the real competition among political groups. Which were election process. As I mentioned before, last week we were joined by they are essential to live on the people's democratic as well as from parliamentary assembly of the OSCE. So I invite now my partners here to share their more than 350 short term observers. But I would feel of course be happy we were able to make a comprehensive to address any questions you may have. 
covering polling stations and election commissions across the country. We were not obstructed from doing our long-term observation work of any of the state or local authorities. This was largely true when it came to our election day observations as well. The election authorities were Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, um, we also engaged with um, each of the candidates in this presidential I'm a election, vice president as well as the representatives of their political and, um, parties, I had the members honor of the media, uh, and other public members. All of these engagements from the European Union, six political groups, and our delegation is integrated within the framework of the OSCE body, the International Observation Institute. We have seen in the course of our and long term observation that the progress is possible following recent developments in the region, which have gradually introduced improvements in the whole of the international But there is a long way to go. We the do not yet see a comprehensive and detailed account of our findings. Five candidates stood in this election, campaign, campaign and in every election of the country. Itself. As well as actively and I'd like to express my, my warm thanks to the These to my colleagues were low key and not directed at the special The candidates have their own platforms, platforms that is true. Ahead of the other between candidates or with service was essentially absent from the selection. And none of the other four candidates could be considered as in opposition to the president's policies or of proposing an agenda distinct from I would also like to thank the head of the EU delegation for choices. The legal framework has been already noted, was subject to extensive positive this reforms is the first time in the recent European years, Parliament has been but remaining restrictions on fundamental freedoms and the right to stand I have, um, are against commitments uh, made now, by indeed, for example, the candidate registration the details and uh, I, I could uh, uh, tell you that the European Parliament is the only directly elected body of the European Union. Together, reducing the the right to stand, the reducing the range of political options. The European Parliament is committed when we look at the to strengthening media, democracy we know all over the world, including in the more critical reporting. And election but we also see is one of our key foreign policy instruments. And practices that are not in line with international standards concerning the The European Union attaches great importance to its partnership with all of the Pakistan, a partnership that has been censorship. Uh, thanks to the new 2019 strategy the for Central Asia election observation mission and the inclusion of uh, with election authorities, political parties and diplomatic missions, as well as with civil society and media organizations. We familiarized ourselves with your, with your legal institutions and with the political climate in your country. And let me say that the recent and ongoing reforms are an encouraging sign but we Two cannot overemphasize the need to establish a rule of law in the United States. We exclude the two opposition parties from the registration process and the lack of genuine electoral competition, and all channels uh, as well as the high number of irregularities in this world's presence, remain substantial in all online on media that we monitor. The incumbent received more coverage than each of the other contestants combined. Um, and though the absence online access of to information has improved, to the lack of many websites remain blocked, directing and the enforcement of sound electoral procedures. So although the situation related to freedom of expression has improved in the last five years, we regret that the persisting restrictions on the social media landscape, where for instance Twitter cannot be used, and in general an overall restrictive uh, legal framework for the media and civil society prevail. I also regret that the reported cases uh, we have heard of, of intimidation of journalists and bloggers, including cases of pre-trial detention. So, on election day, we observe voting in various polling stations across the country, from the opening to the closing of activities and the vote count. Wherever we went, we mostly received a very friendly reception, which we greatly appreciate. Uh, now, some specific remarks. We were pleased to observe that the vote took place in a calm and peaceful manner, with no evidence of serious tension. However, we also observed significant shortcomings and poor enforcement of the procedures. These include incidents of multiple voting, proxy voting and ballot box stuffing, as well as disregard of counting procedures. The continuous practice of adding voters to the voters list in polling stations remain very problematic. In this context, I look forward to the final audit report and the recommendations it will contain. The European Parliament, along with its partners present here today, attaches great significance on the full implementation of these recommendations.
relations. Finally, I should like to underline that the European Parliament values its close institutional cooperation with the Uzbek legislature through the EU-Uzbekistan Parliamentary Cooperation Committee. This brings together parliamentarians from both sides. Uh, the committee has been meeting regularly for the past 20 years and we look forward to continuing this cooperation and to supporting democracy and the process of reform for the benefit of all the people of Uzbekistan. Thank you very much for your attention. Many thanks. We now turn to Daniela de Lida, head of the delegation from the OSC Parliamentary Assembly. Good afternoon, dear colleagues, dear members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Daniela Durida. I'm a member of the German uh, Bundestag, where I serve as vice chair of the Foreign Committee. I'm also vice president of the OEC Parliamentary Assembly, and as Heidi already mentioned, I, have, I am the head of this observer delegation to yesterday's presidential election here in Uzbekistan. It's an honor for me to have led a delegation of almost 100 observers, dedicated and interested, who came from 24 different countries of the OECE region to deploy across Uzbekistan for election day. I also appreciated the great cooperation with my colleagues, Mr. Reimer Lopakka, who served as special coordinator for the International Election Observation Mission, as well as Mr. Owen Murphy from the OSCE, and Mrs. Heidi Hortula from the European Parliament. I would also like to take a moment to thank the Uzbek authorities for inviting us on this very important occasion and to the OSPEC society for its very positive and friendly attitude towards us. My colleagues and I were overwhelmed by the warm welcome we received in so many polling stations yesterday all across the country. And we appreciate the efforts to ensure voting was accessible to all regardless of physical abilities or languages, and noting that Uzbekistan is a country of multi-ethnicity. However, we noted a number of, let's say, old problematic habits with procedures often not followed, especially during the countings. I hope that the high level of legal reforms we have noted during the past years will impact all parts of society, strengthen the democratic political culture, and finally do away with these practices. For example, we have noticed in recent years an opening on, of the media environment with a greater access of citizens to information, which we highly commend. However, we heard about cases of intimidation and harassment of journalists, which are very worrying and contribute to a self-censorship among the profession. Indeed, a free media environment and the respect of fundamental freedoms, such as freedom of speech, are central OSCE commitments and essential for the holding of democratic elections. We stay at the disposal of the USPEC authorities to keep working together and implementing reforms that need to be strengthened and bring the electoral framework more in line with OSCE standards. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much. And finally, we go to Ariel Murphy, who heads the mission for the OSC Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights. Uh, thank you, Katia, and uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much for coming. 
I too would like to thank the special coordinator Reinhold for the leadership role that he has played during our international election observation mission. And I also want to thank Daniela and Haley for leading the delegations that they led. Today we are uh, giving a statement that is the result of our joint work together over the course of this international election observation mission. I'd also like to thank the authorities here in Uzbekistan for their invitation to observe these elections and for their assistance during our stay in the country. Our team of experts began its work in Uzbekistan well over a month ago. We have had 14 teams of long-term observers deployed in every part of the country observing the election process. Last week we were joined by short-term observers from the OSCE participating states, as well as from the Parliamentary Assembly of the OSCE and members of the European Parliament. With more than 350 short-term observers in the field between us, we were able to make a comprehensive assessment of the presidential election, covering polling stations and election commissions across the country. We were not obstructed from doing our long-term observation work by any of the state or local authorities. This was largely true when it came to our election day observations as well. The election authorities worked openly with us at all times. We also engaged with each of the candidates in this presidential election, as well as with representatives of their political parties, members of the media, and other public and private institutions. All of these engagements were courteous and professional. I'd now like to highlight the most important things that we observed and which we have addressed in our statement of findings here today. As a general point, we have seen in the course of our long-term observations that progress is possible following recent welcome reforms, which have gradually introduced improvements in the holding of elections. But there is a long way to go. We do not yet see a genuinely pluralistic environment. Five candidates stood in this election, campaigning in every region of the country, as well as actively on social networks for the first time. But these campaigns were low-key and not directed at the public. The candidates had their individual platforms, that is true. But real debate between candidates or with voters was essentially absent from this election. And none of the other four candidates could be considered as in opposition to the president's policies or of proposing an agenda distinct to his. And this significantly limited the choices facing the electorate. The legal framework, as has been already noted, was subject to extensive positive reforms in recent years. But remaining restrictions on fundamental freedoms and the right to stand go against commitments made by Uzbekistan. For example, candidate registration entails excessively strict requirements, and party registration rules are both burdensome and open to arbitrary interpretation. Together, they duly limit the right to stand, reducing the range of political options for voters. When we look at the media landscape, we know recent improvements and some more critical reporting. But we also see a restrictive legal framework and practices that are not in line with international standards concerning freedom of speech, including intimidation and harassment, all of which contributes to a culture of self-censorship alongside continuing state control. The ODR Election Observation Mission commenced its media monitoring on the 20th of September with quantitative and qualitative analysis of six main television stations and six online media outlets. Separately, campaign activities on social networks were also monitored. Our monitoring found a virtual absence of criticism in the media about higher level public officials and candidates. Two public television channels made an effort to provide each of the candidates with similar amounts of coverage. But three private channels focused overwhelmingly more on the activities of the incumbent. And all channels carried extensive additional coverage of the incumbent in his role as president, rather than candidate. In all online media that we monitored, the incumbent received more coverage than each of the other contestants combined. And though online access to information has improved, many websites remain blocked directly and indirectly. The Central Election Commission conducted its work professionally, efficiently, and transparently. Women made up nearly half of the lower level commissioners, but no district electoral commission was chaired by a woman. And the ability of lower level election commissions to function independently was negatively impacted by the central role given to Mahala committees in the organization of the electoral process. We saw on election day large numbers of voters being added to the voter lists. 
This was done without proper safeguards or judicial oversight. This is against good practice. And this is a significant irregularity, as was the proxy voting, multiple voting, and indications of ballot box stuffing, which we observed. Insofar as access for persons with disabilities is concerned, it was positive to see that 80% of polling stations visited were independently accessible. Our work will continue, and we will observe the finalization of the results and any complaints. And our final report, which we intend to complete some two months from now, will contain any re recommendations that we may have for how the electoral system in Uzbekistan can be further reformed and strengthened. And we look forward to working with the authorities here in this process. Before I conclude, I would like to acknowledge the hard work of the team of international experts that I've had the privilege to lead, and especially our local staff, national citizens of Uzbekistan, who have been so committed to their work over the course of our mission. Thank you. Thank you very much. As the heads of mission and delegation said, we are happy to take your questions from journalists. If you would begin by introducing yourselves and your media outlet before asking your question. Is there anybody who would like to ask yes, a question? Yes, we have. Um, do we get a mic or? Uh -huh. Can I take my mask off as I ask this question? Sorry, thank you. Um, I'm Nav Bukhori Mamova from the Voice of America. I'm based in Washington, but have access to Uzbekistan, come to report from here time to time. And um, it was really interesting to observe the observers yesterday. <laughs> and then I later realized that I was getting observed as, as I was observing you. So I think there was a lot of mutual observation taking place yesterday. Two questions. Um, how much time and effort do you really put into looking at the previous election monitoring observation reports as you start your mission? Because as, as an avid reader of those uh, reports, I see a lot of similarities. I see a lot of repeating patterns there. You know, no opposition, no real competition, no genuine, no genuine political competing field, a lot of mistakes. Uh, being repeated. So, you know, what does that say about Uzbekistan's democracy learning curve? I really would like to hear from each, each of you uh, on this. And secondly, you know, the irony is that Uzbeks voted in unprecedented numbers yesterday. More than 16 million uh, people voted, and many experts that I have talked to so far think it's an accurate number based on their observations. Um, more than 80% turnout. It's, I'm sure a lot of democracies must be really envious, you know, looking at, the, at this rate. What does that say about Uzbekistan? You know, voting without opposition, is that something that Uzbeks are still comfortable with, or based on your research and uh, you know, studies, do you think that they, they are actually expressing, maybe pushing the government to do more to satisfy their needs? What we heard yesterday from voters was nobody competed for our vote. Nobody came asking for our vote, including President Mirziyoyev. Many people never heard him say, hey, vote for me. I need your vote. So many voters actually think that even though they were voting, their votes are taken for granted in general. So how can your report help Uzbeks to have a more constructive approach to this process? Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Katya. Thank you for both of your questions. Um, in relation to the first question you asked about the work that we do here, I mean, what I can say from the part of Ozir is that we don't compare elections. We don't compare elections between two countries, we don't even compare elections within a country. But this is our ninth, ninth occasion in which Odier has observed um, an election in Uzbekistan. And every time that we observe an election, we prepare a report like the one we have prepared today, which then leads to a final report with recommendations. And what I can tell you is that in the 2019 parliamentary elections, the recommendations, for the first time, the, the authorities here invited uh, Odier into the country to discuss the recommendations and how they might inform our reform process. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, that couldn't occur. So the authorities here invited their own international experts to help in those reforms. So when you look at a, at a report like the one we have produced today, we talk about the reform, the recommendations that we've made previously, which have been implemented, and we point to recommendations which still have to be implemented. And then it's for others to judge the degree to which they might feel the authorities have moved in the right direction and how much further they might have to go. 
And in relation to your, your second question, um, which was about sign. Unprecedented number, unprecedented amount of voting, despite the fact that there is no opposition, no competition, no engagement. What, what you'll see in the report, um, in the detailed section of the report that covers the campaign section, is how we describe the campaign itself. And we do know that the, the campaign events did happen throughout the country in every region, but they were low-key. They were primarily directed at their own voters and not the wider public, not the citizens. And there was um, essentially competition um, between the candidates, between the parties, the types of debates that we would like to have seen didn't happen. And for voters then, that, that, it's difficult for them to actually know what their choices are if they don't see that kind of debate happening in a campaign. Um, so we do point to that in the report that we've published. We okay. Anybody else responding? I had also the chance to observe the elections in December 2019, the parliamentary elections. And um, I personally have seen there more engagement and more competition as I have seen uh, this time. And speaking of the outcome, this is for me a very positive fact. Uh, and I think Uzbek people want to take part in the elections. Uh, and we should give them the chance to, to have elections from the highest standard as it is possible, speaking of free and fair elections. Let me please just underline that we stay uh, at the disposal to the uh, Uzbek authorities as OSC parliamentarians. We don't have to judge. We were just, and this is quite an important uh, uh, point that we have to underline. We are just observers, but we stay at the disposal, and we all see that there are many uh, reforms done already. So as I mentioned, for instance, for disabled uh, person, I, I found it very impressive to see that, how it worked. Um, and I think um, the turnout that you mentioned is very impressive as well. But it's uh, legitimation uh, for the current president and you see that it's going on. But on the other hand, we have to see that there are much more efforts to do. I Thank you. To, I'd like to say that um, uh, this uh, obvious wish of uh, so many Muslim uh, people uh, to participate in political life, uh, and I, I understand that most of it uh, voluntarily and uh, out of conviction. Mm -hmm. They want the reforms. Should now be honored by the president uh, by creating this enabling environment where uh, true uh, debate and uh, a number of options for the future of the country will be uh, created together with the people. So, public participation is key to me after these elections. Uh, taking people on board, allowing associations to be registered uh, without these cumbersome and procedures, including the registration of the opposition political parties. So then I think the learning curve towards the next elections could be quite uh, speedy and uh, fast. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions? I should add that we do have simultaneous translation and you're welcome to put your questions in Uzbek or in Russian. I don't see any further questions from the floor, in which case I'll check to see whether there are any that are coming in over Zoom. Indeed, we wait for this. Apologies, it takes a while to get through there. Though.
we're waiting for this to, the translation to come through. Is there anybody else here in the room? <laughs> I, I have a question, if I can. The extra one. As long as you can wait for the microphone yeah, to make sure. its way back yeah, to you. Yeah, I just gave it away, so. <clears throat> The lack of debate um, in, in these elections, and we've actually never seen in Uzbekistan anybody competing for presidency debate with each other, so there is no history, no, there is no experience. And, uh, but we saw a lot of debates in the parliamentary elections when parties, party representatives debated on various topics, and that made the previous 2019 elections very dynamic. So this time, when I asked uh, continuously about why there were no elections, I heard three main reasons. Number one was, well, President Mirziyoyev is not initiating, so since he's not really kind of, you know, expressing that he wants to debate with anybody, nobody will dare to actually, you know, put a proposal forward. Uh, the second uh, answer was, parties are not willing. They are nervous, and, they, you know, there is no will within the parties. And when we ask the Central Election Commission, they say it's not up to us. It's, you know, parties should initiate. We, we can't really interfere into that process. But altogether, uh, what we saw was a lot of internal interest, but nobody really coming, like, sort of leading that process. And it's very clear that Uzbeks need help there. Who should be helping in this process? I'm not sure if this is something that Odir should be dealing with, or I mean, is there a follow-up that you do? How can you help the Uzbek electoral system, political system, to learn to debate with each other without fear of each other, of course, you know? At some point, Uzbeks deserve a debate, right? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I think you don't really need to seek that force from outside. You have it inside. And the only thing I think is lacking is to sort of liberate the, the debate, you know, give a civil society real opportunities and um, um, be very sparing with the restrictions of being on the very... Um, there might be some issues that need restrictions but uh, we of course all wanted to tweet on, you know, yeah. on the election but we couldn't tweet which is a normal communication for us so I hope that these kind of restrictions will be abolished as soon as possible because uh, then when people are uh, getting on board and involved they also are very responsible in their dealings with the uh, issues most you know, it's hard to buy this argument that when, especially when parties say, well, we need to learn because what we saw in 2019 was a lot of heated debates between party leaders. So we know that Alshar Kadyrov knows how to debate. We know that others can, you know, can debate as well. We had at least one lawyer in that group of, you know, competitors. So that was very interesting. I can only speak of my country. We have also a huge difference between parliamentary election and presidential elections. And when a federal president in Austria is running for a second term, we have nearly the same situation as we have seen it here. Thank you very much. We have a question that's coming over Zoom about the media. Um, at the debates on TV, Candid, not candidates participated, but rather their representatives. What would the opinion of the international observers be about this? Well, I mean, uh, thank you for the question. Thanks, Katia. I mean, it is it's factually true that there were two pre-recorded debates uh, prior to election day, and those debates involved representatives of the candidates rather than candidates themselves. In Uzbekistan, as, as the people here will know, the candidates do have a system where they can have up to 15 proxies campaign on their behalf and represent them on their behalf as well in terms of dealing with the Central Election Commission or doing other things that are integral to a campaign. But when we talk about the debates in, in, our, in our report and we talk about it amongst ourselves, it is one thing that we kept on coming back to in terms of when we say that the, the election uh, campaign was not truly competitive because that type of interaction between the candidates and the, between the parties, that kind of engagement that you see in a debate is something that we think is important in terms of helping to inform voter choice prior to voting. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have another question that's come in via Zoom.
from Iran and international TV asking, can you say whether these elections were in fact democratic? Thanks, Captain. I mean, one thing I think it's important to note is that what we do here is we look at the, the process. We observe what happens throughout the election process. It's not just about one day, but everything that is part of the campaign, and the election administration leading up to election day and what might happen after in terms of the counting of votes, in terms of then the, any complaints that might be there. And we observe this process based on, uh, we observe it, excuse me, against both the, the domestic laws that are here in the country but also international standards that countries have entered into. And Uzbekistan obviously, as a participating state of the OSCE, has made certain commitments in that regard. We then produce a report like we are producing today. It is independent, it is impartial, it is a preliminary summary of our findings and conclusions, which will be followed by a final report in about two months, which will have recommendations then in certain areas of the electoral process which we think should be reformed. But going back to what Daniela was saying earlier, we are independent, we are observers. We can do this work and we can present it, and it's up for the people of Uzbekistan to then judge what they think uh, the standard of the election was. Thank you. Thank you. And another question concerning the local observers. Uh, what would the opinion of the international observers be about the local observers and what is our relationship with them? What, what we have seen, there was a high number of observers of the parties. Uh, and we have not seen so many other observers on the, in some polling stations. Uh, but but I, I think we, with our work and, and, and the local observers' um, observation was not so different from other countries. Thanks, Katia. And if I can add to that as well, when we visited the polling stations, of course, there were again, representatives of the political parties and um, members who were there from the Mahala committees. But it is contrary to international standards that actual citizen election operation by civil society is not provided for. And that does limit transparency and then public scrutiny of the electoral process, and we have said that together in our report. Thank you very much. Um, Daniela, you have there are no more questions that have come in via Zoom, so if there are no more from the floor, um, please go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Bugun nukta uz saytidan irodi jorava. Uzbekistondagi siyosiy muhitni qanday baholaysiz va ushbu siyosiy muhit ochiqlik va oshkoralik prinsiplariga qay darajada amal qilmoqda? Thank you. Did my colleagues manage to get the question? I, I think I might have picked it up if I could, if I could jump in. Uh, thank you, Ronald. Uh, thank you, Katja. And uh, thank you for your question. Um, I mean, to come back to the kind of initial points that I think we all made in our, in our opening statements, we do believe that recent reforms have gradually introduced welcome improvements when we look at the electoral process and other aspects of society that might have an impact in terms of elections and campaigns. But in terms of the environment, we do not yet see a genuinely pluralistic one. And that's why we talk about the campaign not being truly competitive later on in the report as well. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for this question. I think uh, it has a lot to do also with, uh, with the freedom of uh, expression and media. Um, and uh, I hope uh, that there will be further steps uh, towards um, uh, allowing the public to share information about uh, public administration, public finances. Uh, I think you have a law on public access to information, but as I understand, it's not really uh, implemented in a citizen-friendly way. And uh, so in this way, uh, very important, but also sometimes difficult issues could be debated in society. And, uh, I cannot overemphasize uh, the uh, media freedom. 
Thank you very much. I see another question. Yes, I have a question. Uh, I'm Mida Kodirva from My5 TV channel. I have one question. Uh, first time in Uzbekistan, in the capital of Uzbekistan, Tashkent opened International Media Hall. Uh, they took part many uh, many propaganda parties, round table, cadre stations, all the uh, five parties. What do you think? Is it the first step for uh, for democratic elections? How can uh, evaluate these presentations, round table, cadre stations? Thank you. Maybe I start. Uh, of course, it's, it's, it's positive having such events. But if there's not even one debate of the candidates themselves, it would not be a big, Yeah, it's a progress, of course. Yes, yes, yes. We see the progress, and all of us mentioned that we have seen this progress, and it's going in the right direction. Uh, but we are still on the way. So we have to see it. And speaking of presidential elections, uh, how I see it, the aim should be that the candidates themselves take part. Thank you. So uh, let me mention that we invited as OSU parliamentarian assembly also all the candidates and we had a round table with them. And they had the opportunity to present their topics and their issues as well for the OSCE. So, but we have, in my view, it's very important that they have political dialogues, and we should encourage them to do that more, and not only on the OSCE roundtables. But I'm sure they will have more and more exercise to make clear what their special, specific issues are. Also, in opposition, for instance, with other parties, who may, and they will make clear, and this is part of the reforms that we should underline. Thank you very much. I don't see any further questions, so thank you very much indeed for your interest. The preliminary statement uh, with the initial findings of the International Observer mission are outside on the table in three languages and will shortly be on OIDEA's website together with the press release also in the three languages. Thank you very much. Thank you.